All right, we're back. Maybe. Honestly, I don't know if the camera's working or not. And at this point, I don't care. So, I got all the rest of the flipping stick butt piece handle screwed up. They've been sitting over there chilling, curing. I had breakfast. I had a shower. So I feel better and I smell better. Um, I'm less grumpy. And before I got sticky fingers again, building handles, I decided I'd go ahead and print my labels. So I told you guys in the past, I have the old K-Sun. They don't make it anymore. Down in the description, there's a link to the label maker I use. I am using half inch clear. This happens to be white on clear for this rod or these 10 rods as it were. Um, so the last, all I got to do really is hit print, I think. And yeah, <clears throat> he just started printing. So I'm printing the last six. What I'm going to do next is when they finish printing. Is I'm going, these, I had these three print at the same time. So I'm going to them apart. Maybe if I can see what I'm doing. Need some more light. <laughs> All right, so there's my four flipping stick labels. <clears throat> and here are my six spinning rod labels. <clears throat> Cut them apart. have 10 labels now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in my high-tech label straightener you guys seen it I think I should patent it um, get them all lined up here curving the same direction because this these label tapes come on a roll obviously and so they want to do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them in here. Against the curve. On the piece of paper that won't stick to them. And I'm going to leave them in there for a few hours at least. These are the labels for this rod. They were in there a little too long. They went back the other way, but if you leave it, let them lay out a bit, they will flatten back up. So I'm gonna put these out of the way. I'm gonna put these up. Put these out of the way. <coughs> and we are gonna commence to putting some rear grips and reel seats on. All right, so put this away keyboards and a mouse and epoxy do not blend well together. All right, let's grab, let's do one of the spinning rods first. Now this is one I put together a couple days ago. In fact, I did all six of them at the same time. Pull all this unnecessary tape off now. The only thing I still need is my backbone mark, which is right there still. I am going to need another mark, and I'll show you how we get to that here in a second. So what I will need is the front of the reel seat location. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure and get one dead on, and then we're going to make a pattern out of that one to do the other five. Okay. So, we need a spinning rear grip, which these are different than the casting. is a different diameter, obviously. Spinning is going to be much smaller. These are designed to go in these aero style Real seats, they will slide right in here like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this back down. I think it's my 
my stop back on the end of my stand here. I'm gonna get my stem. This is my guide alignment tool. Uh, I'm gonna use it to represent a spinning reel. Got it in the reel seat. Pull it down tight enough. Got the rear grip. In the back of the reel seat. And we're gonna slide the rear grip over the butt grip section. These are gonna be 11 and a half. Which is right there. What I'm gonna do here cheat a little bit. Oh, I've already actually done the layout. I forgot I did that earlier when I was doing the original layout. And I don't exactly like it. That was not super accurate. It was close enough for cutting. I'm going to do one for the actual placement of the real seat. So I'm going to put some tape down, just so I can make a mark. And that is center of that stem is now at 11 and a half. I'm going to mark that, which pretty much is just 14 on my guide here, on my layout guide. All right, so we'll take the guide alignment tool out. I'm going to slide rear grip back and now all I need to do is I want to put a piece of tape on that mark for referencing where the front of this reel seat is on this bank. What we'll do is when we arbor up is we're going to build this real seat to right there. And we will push the rear grip up tight to the real seat. And this is where the front of the real seat needs to end up is right there at the edge of that tick. All right, so let's get busy. I'm going to slide the rear grip back a little bit out of the way. But we'll be arboring it shortly. That's the back of the reel seat, so I'm going to arbor this first. I'm going to arbor the back of the reel seat first. Slide back a little bit. I'm going to slide back quite a bit. Could use one more turn. Too snug. I'm going to take just about half of that last roll back off. Okay, I like that a lot better. Now, I need to do the front rubber.
<clears throat> All right, that's perfect. That's kind of made up. Now, all we need to do is arbor the rear grip so we don't have this. So we're going to arbor that. It's right here. carried away. Okay. I've got my arbors built. Now this arbor here and the rear grip is really not to support the rear grip as much as it is, is to keep the glue, the epoxy, packed back in here so we get good contact. This rear grip is supported fully by sliding it inside of the real seat. The one failure point in these grips is the rear grip spinning loose. The first two I built, I didn't use that arbor I didn't get enough epoxy in it and it spun loose. And one of the last ones I built, the one I built for myself, because I have such violent hook sets, I guess. I haven't looked at it. I'll probably bring it in here later today when I get a break for all this other stuff, see if I can fix it, but it's starting to slide. So I've got another failure that's three out of about 150 that I've built. This is the first one that I've had fail since I started using this arbor. I don't know what I did, if I just didn't get enough epoxy in there or what happened, but uh, we're gonna find out here in a little bit. But right now we're gonna mix up some epoxy and we're gonna go ahead and finish this real seat on at least rod one out of 10. I'll probably finish this one on camera and then I will uh, I'll do the rest of the spinning rods and then I'll do another one on camera with the uh, Casting seat because it's got a couple, it's, it's got at least one other part in it. So here we go. Epoxy time. Paper plate, popsicle sticks. I got my alcohol for cleanup. Got my squares here for cleanup. A couple of half sheets of paper towels just in case I need bigger cleanup and to clean my hands with. That is one thing you really have to be careful with, especially with these pre-finished grips, is epoxy fingerprints, either on these grips or on these on the blanks. It's almost impossible to get them off. So let's mix up some epoxy. Now even though I'm doing a bunch of these at once, I don't like to mix a big batch of epoxy, at least this 10 minute stuff. Uh, you just don't have the time to work it and, and get two of them right. I mean, I do have some slower setup there, the pro-paste I may pull down and use after I finish this one up, just so I can make a, a big batch of epoxy and do multiple rods with the same batch of epoxy. Probably get me in trouble, but you know, that's what I'm good at. Okay, let's get this mixed up good here. Now this American Tackle seat has some pretty big gaps inside of it in here that I'm going to want to fill in between those ridges. Hopefully you can see those ridges. That's why I'm pasting, I'm putting a lot of this paste epoxy on that I really want to fill that gap. 
and I'm going out in front of it here because I want the very front of the seat full of epoxy as well. I don't have a, a gap that would cause a bubble when I start my finish work, when I do the epoxy ramp up front there. And the camera just quit. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully you guys are still there overhead. You are. So, yeah, the camera just quit, but not really much to see there anyway. And I don't know what it's doing now. So they're making noises. You hear it beeping. Yeah. Oh. Let's get this excess out of here. Start to bring this up close. So now we still have a gap inside there. I'm going to peel some of this excess off the outside of this rear grip piece. I don't have to get it completely clean at the moment because most of that is going to tuck up inside the actual real seat anyway, but I want to get most of that off. And then we're going to keep sliding the real seat back. And pulling that excess epoxy in by twisting it, it's pulling it in that gap. And you know, like winding a string up on a stick. So I'm trying to get that entire gap filled. But we're gonna have a little excess, which is fine. I'm gonna push it up on it. And slide the whole assembly back a little bit. Till we get to our tape mark. There's the edge of the tape. Here's the rear grip up tight on the real seat. A little more push out than I would have normally liked, but we'll clean it up real quick and then we'll set the uh, the real seat to the spine. And let's set the real seat to the spine real quick. Real seat's on top, spine's on top. Perfect. A little more blowout on the epoxy. There, just getting everything cleaned up. You so don't have any epoxy residue anywhere. I do still have a little there. And then I just got it on my fingers. It's not good. Okay, that is finished. I'll pull that off and see if there's any epoxy on there. That front is fairly full. 
It's not exactly completely full. I'm going to take this so it doesn't move. And we'll pack just a little bit. Oh, this is getting pretty sticky. I'll pack just a little bit in underneath the very front of that real seat. This is going to be under some trim uh, wrap, but I still want it nice and neat and clean. Make it easier to do the wrap and make the wrap look nice and neat. Here we go. Okie dokie. Check one last time. Real seat is in the right location. That's it for number one. I got five more of these to do, so don't go away. I'll be back. Hi, right, we're back. I got one spinning handle completely assembled. Decided I was going to go ahead and do one casting rod completely assembled. At least while the cameras are kind of working at the moment. Because I've about had enough of camera mess. So, next step for putting the casting handles together. Oh, and by the way, Derek will be here in a little bit. Um, he's interested in rod building. You haven't met him yet. You'll meet him in a little bit. We'll talk about how I've corrupted him with this whole fishing thing. I've cost him, well, not yet, but I think I'm pretty much going to cost him his girlfriend and his life savings. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. So first, though, we're going to do a little bit more pre-assembly on these handle pieces. Um, I had already yesterday glued in the accent trim ring on the back of the rear grip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-assemble the adapter ring that goes from the real seat to the rear grip. But I'm I'm going to glue them into the real seat right now using the Pro Glue five minute. And I don't remember which one I started with, so I want to start another batch here. So I'm just going to put a drop about the size of a dime of each part. And then the clock will start on that for 10 minutes. It'll be a 10 minute set on that as well. I'm gonna get a little bit more light so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so with my little spatula, I'm gonna mix these two together. The small end has some ribs on it and it's going to snap in right there. It's pretty snug. It's really snug actually. But it does pop in there. So now let's get it back out. And all we need is a little bit of epoxy on the inside of the rear part of the real seat here because this is all going to be completely jam full of epoxy eventually. I just need it to stay together long enough for us to put the rest of it together. So I'm going to take a little bit on my little shoe special here and I'm just going to coat the inside of the back of the rear grip. If that makes any sense. I got a good coat there. 
before I even put it together, I'm gonna add a little bit of excess epoxy on the back of the rail seat here. I'm just gonna clean that off. Then I'm just gonna snap it in. And let it sit, check, make sure I don't have any fingerprints or any epoxy on it anywhere. I don't believe I do. And I'm gonna stand it and let the weight of the real seat just hold it. It's not falling out anyway. So we're waiting for that to set. We still got some time on this epoxy. Let's see if we can't get all four of these done before this epoxy starts to set. Now, if you guys can hear a bunch of background noise, I apologize. Um, they're working on a two-stroke motor across the street and it keeps firing up over there. But that's what happens when you live in a waterfront community. People are always doing something. At least the airboats aren't being cranked up at the moment. All right, so let's snap in number two. There it goes, pop right in there. Everything looks clean. Two down. Mr. Man, we've been waiting on you. Dude, I know, I'm sorry. Me and the whole community, because we're live on camera, brother. Oh my goodness. Come on in here, pull a chair. Good morning, good morning. Or good afternoon, I should say. What, um, what I told them about you is that... You're financially crippling me with yeah, this Yeah, uh, financially and socially crippling you at the moment. Um, what I didn't tell them is that your girlfriend is wonderful and you probably won't lose her even though she probably would be smarter if she left. Oh, she would 100%. On her part. Oh, yeah. um, but we love her. We do, we do. All of us do. She's a wonderful girl. Yeah, yeah. she's but, a good girl. Yeah, what I didn't tell them is that about three months ago, I corrupted you and your father mm -hmm. by getting you all into this bass fishing thing. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna spend your life savings Likely. My life savings, his life savings, yeah. her life savings. Pretty know, much. The whole thing. I got the whole family corrupted, so yeah. I think my work here is done. Yeah, thanks, Lee. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even got him into spending money on electronics yet, so that's kind of... Oh, God. Trying to keep him... Trying to kind of bring him in a little bit of time. You know, first... Oh, dude. The first sample is free kind of thing. Yeah. Get you mm. So what I'm doing here, they already know what's going on, but I finished okay. the last one. So I'm, I'm pre-assembling yet one more piece. Mm -hmm. So when we put this whole assembly together on these casting re on mm -hmm. rods. We won't have as many moving parts at once. Okay. So this is just the adapter ring that goes between the rear grip mm -hmm. and the real seat. And I'm just, I mixed up some liquid 10 minute epoxy um, just because it's easier to work with in these little places mm -hmm. and it doesn't. So spew. essentially same thing, just a different. It's exactly the same finished product. It's mm -hmm. just a different, it starts in a different form. Okay. But it is glue, and it's starting to get stringy, so I'm running out of time. Um, which is fine, because this is the last one I've got to do. And this trim ring just pops in here. Like that. And that'll be solid as a rock in about 10 minutes. So in the meantime, I'm going to clean this up real quick. Get this epoxy off my little spatula. Let's start the layout on the rest of the components for this handle. Okay. So what we're going to do is like we did uh, the spinning rod is I'm going to set my, my stop here. Mm -hmm. This is a handle, the, the butt assembly I glued up yesterday, so mm -hmm. it's, it's solid. And where these triggers are for the for this flipping stick is going to be at 12 and a half. So what I have done is I marked on my little cheat here mm -hmm. on the tape where the end of that reel seat needs to be when we're done. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll take some tape and I'll mark that line on this blank so we know exactly where it needs to be. And the reason I did this is because I'm, I'm doing multiples identical, mm -hmm. supposed to be identical rods. Mm -hmm. 
So instead of measuring everyone every time, <clears throat> I measured once and I was making a pattern basically. Right. So they all will be exactly the same in theory. Doesn't always work out like that in the real world, but in theory. The uh, budget assembly line. Yes. So this will, this real seat mm -hmm. will end up right there. Okay. Okay, so this rear grip section, I'm gonna go ahead and slide it on, slide that on there. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that on too. Okay, and, and that's gonna go this way? Uh, way? Trim is back this way, trim. the shiny part this way. Okay. There you go. Because what'll happen is that'll all snap together. So eventually, this will wind up. Well, now, now I'm starting to see where it comes together. Okay. See, that's what it'll look like when we're done. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. Now I would mark back here, but you, we're going to have to slide this back, which is why I marked here. So mm -hmm. when we it put this get all together, yeah, because this there's not enough play back here to put the tape. Yeah. And if you mark it with a pencil, you'll sometimes lose that pencil line mm -hmm. on the gray on the gray. So that's why I marked the front of the real seat, and that should put our trigger at 12 and a half, just like that. Hmm. We'll be there. Yeah, I've done this a couple times. You think, yeah. So one, the first thing that I will do though, mm -hmm. is I'm going to mark where the rear of this real seat is, just for starting to build an arbor, because right now it's sloppy on the mm -hmm. mic. So we're gonna take our half inch masking tape and I'm coming back from my mark a little bit. And I'm gonna build the rear real seat arbor. And it's not gonna take much. It's not and that's that similar much. to what you did back there to get it nice and snug. Yeah, I'll do I'll do one here for mm -hmm. this, exactly like I did mm -hmm. the rears. Yeah, that's exactly the same concept. So I need a little bit more. So just a little bit at a time until you get that nice snug. Yeah, once I figure out, you know, I don't, I don't know how many turns. See, that's a little bit too much. It's okay. not a problem. We'll peel a, one spin off of it. And it's still just a little too snug for my liking. I could shove it up on there, but. Why, why make it hard? And well, and like we discovered with the rear there, when you put the epoxy on it, it that epoxy's taking up space too. So. Right, right, yeah. So you want it to slide up and snug up. But if it's too snug by the time you add the epoxy, it'll probably, you'll be you, fighting it more than anything. You'll be fighting it and it'll try to push off. Gotcha. And it's not gonna wanna be where it wants, where it needs to be. There we go. So it's it's just a hair of a wiggle, but not mm -hmm. enough. And by the time we get epoxy in there, you won't notice it. But the front is still wobbly. So what we'll do is we'll come back here and we'll build one just inside of the front of the real seat. A lot of times when you're building these real seats, mm -hmm. the blanks have a lot of taper. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of difference in diameter from here to here. Mm -hmm. it's on these these medium, heavy, moderate, fast 765s, the, the flipping stick blanks, they don't taper as much here. They start their taper way down here. Right, right. So there we go. So we got rid of the wobble in the front. Mm -hmm. We got rid of the wobble in the back. The last thing we have to do is build an arbor so this will seat up like we want it to. Okay. But so this has got a bulb in it right mm -hmm. here, right? So about right there, we want to build a small arbor. Okay. That will snug up tight. On that back end. On the back end, and then we'll build one up closer to the front because the failure point in these in this design mm -hmm. is under a lot of load, setting the hook or whatever, mm -hmm. these 
can break loose mm -hmm. and start spinning. The first two I built failed. Okay. And it's because I didn't do this arbor. So um, arbor's just a little extra support. What with it does, that epoxy. Well, well, what it's going to do is going to force the epoxy to stay back. I got you. So you don't get an air gap. Yep. In your epoxy, you get full contact between the blank, the mm -hmm. epoxy, and then the rear grip. Like I said, the first two I did for Jeff mm -hmm. failed. Okay. And then I figured out how to fix it because he sent them back to me and I took them apart, slid it back, and I had solid epoxy on about half of it and mm -hmm. an air gap on the other on half. The other so half. I just didn't have enough contact. Gotcha. And that camera just quit. Uh, which one's that one? That one over there. So this one's still running. So, hi guys. You're the, you're the sole person, people who get visual, you get no big camera. So we're gonna tighten this up. You guys are watching what I'm doing anyway. Nobody wants to see my ugly mug. <laughs> and you're not much prettier, so. I was about to say, uh, hey, but don't use me as a poster boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the camera that's been acting up all morning. That's the one that's about to be a fisher tracker. About to be what? A fisher tracker. <laughs> Oh it's not God. heavy enough to be an anchor. That's no. right. All right, so we're starting to get close here. So I want this to snug up because I'm gonna I'm gonna wedge as wedge as much epoxy back here. Mm -hmm. And if I got this close, it doesn't have to be tight, but just mm -hmm. close, it'll keep that epoxy from dragging forward. Mm -hmm. It'll force it back there and make it fill in more and of that make, void back exactly, there. Exactly. That's the whole point: is to squeeze that epoxy and get as much contact. to reduce those air bubbles and air gaps in there. It's just making the epoxy stay where I want it to stay for 10 minutes. Yeah. Because after 10 minutes, it doesn't matter. Right. It's, it's where the it's going to be. set. See, now I'm too tight. Okay. It won't slide the rest of the way forward, which I wanted to get to there so I'd know I was going to be too big. So, right. So now, so now you just work it off. I'll start backing off, exactly. Versus having too small. And, and not really knowing, because once you get it made up here, you don't really know how much I'm Right, gonna right. Stay. And I'd be like, oh, that's good. And really, it's not good. It's really not, <laughs> it's really that good. not good. All right, so we're getting close. We're down a little more. In fact, I'll start this front one with my tape off. And then what's that front one going to be for? It's just, again, to hold the epoxy. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, this typically your arbors will be for centering your real so, seat or whatever, but this is going to have to slide up here and mate. Okay, so you'll have epoxy here, here, and on the back and, side. And underneath the real seat. Okay. So there'll be epoxy everywhere when right. we're done. What these arbors do is it keeps everything centered. Mm -hmm. It keeps the epoxy where it's supposed to be mm -hmm. until the epoxy sets. Because after that, the, the arbors really don't pay that. They don't play that big a role in holding everything, the epoxy holds it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. until it gets set, that's where they're... Yeah, this is the this is the temporary frame, basically. Yeah. To keep everything nice and centered on the blank and to keep the epoxy where it belongs. Cool beans. It's not really structural. Okay. The epoxy is the structural part. Now we're getting really close. Maybe a couple more. Yeah, just a couple more. Not uh -huh. quite, so he's trying to pull back, so yeah. we're getting real close. There you go, we're going to need to build this one up a little mm -hmm. bit more. So do you want them roughly the same size or that front one's gonna be a little bit bigger? Well, the front one probably be a little bit bigger mm -hmm. because, because this, one, this one doesn't match, right? Right, right. So it, yeah, this one, the front one's gonna be significantly bigger. Gotcha. It doesn't have to be, you know, uptight mm -hmm. because this is gonna center on the rear piece, which I've already centered, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. yesterday. And then, so the rear is gonna center on this piece and then the front of the rear grip is gonna center on the, okay. on the rear seat because I've got it centered on its arbors. Okay, gotcha, understood. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a uh, wireless connection in seven, or you think it's a? Oh no, it's a camera thing. Oh, is it? Yeah, GoPros have their own. Um, I'm sure Mike could, uh, you know, fix it. You know, he's been fixing stuff all morning. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's that's Derek. That's Derek throwing our other neighbor under the bus. <clears throat> Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> nice, nice guy. Great guy. Great guy. Hasn't learned a lesson to fix it once. <laughs> Just so. Well, he fixed it. <laughs> he he <laughs> hasn't learned a lesson of hiring the guy who fixes it once. That's the lesson he's still working on. All right, I'm gonna tighten that up just a little bit more. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy. I don't want that one. I don't. I don't want this one so much that it's scraping every bit of epoxy off. Because mm -hmm. I want a solid epoxy connection from here, mm -hmm. you know, across the mm -hmm. uh, over top, and then over top, and then tie into all this epoxy. So all of this epoxy from here so are you, to here will be one <clears throat> shot. Okay, so you're gonna coat it like you did the handle. Yeah, from exactly. here All the way down. Yeah, so we're okay. gonna we're gonna pull these apart. Right. And we're gonna coat back here as mm -hmm. far as we can. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to coat all of this, and mm -hmm. we're just going to shove it all together and have one solid piece of epoxy going from here to here. Okay. Yep. That way you will get a really tight fit. <laughs> all that trans, all that vibration will transfer into your hand. So this might be a silly question. So I know on the on the back ends when you put the caps, yeah, um, and you'll put the tape on there to kind of keep that bubble. What do you do from the front, or do you not have to worry about it well, as much? So what I'll do is I'll clean up, and I'll once I get it mm -hmm. set. I will tape this okay. rear, okay, um, so that it can so it don't back. slide back. Right. And then when I get this cleaned up, I tape. will tape the front. the front. Okay, and by then the glue, the epoxy is going to be about set anyway. Right. So now we have our arbors built. So mm -hmm. it's time to slide this back, and we will coat. See that will. This ring is going to wind up about right here mm -hmm. when we move it, right? So if we just hold that, you can just get an idea of where that ring is going to be. It's about the same spot mm -hmm. as there. Okay. So as long as we've got epoxy here, mm -hmm. as we're pulling it forward and the diameter keeps getting smaller, it's going to start compressing yep. that epoxy inside. Sometimes you'll get some epoxy actually scored out this because the air is going to be forced out this way. Right, but you can so, clean that all exactly. up. Exactly. That's what <laughs> we'll have to pay attention to make sure if it does score it out, we'll clean it mm -hmm. up. What we don't want is so much air that it's causing pressure to... push. It'll, it'll, it'll shoot the air out, hopefully, mm -hmm. without squeezing epoxy out. But okay. again, if it does, it's just a, a little more clean up. Okay. So we're going to coat from here mm -hmm. all the way to here. Okay. So epoxy time. And now for this one, are you going to go back to the go back to the yeah, paste, the big stuff? So heavier body, the 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 liquid you can't build up the volume. It's it's too it's too um, got too much viscosity. Or, okay. Or it's it's too, not enough density. It's too liquidy. It won't okay. Stand yeah, yeah, up yeah. The way this the paste does. Okay. And and that's why I use the liquid where I did because I don't want that when I was putting these little parts together. You mm -hmm. don't want to be fighting that because it's just a lot of cleanup. You can do it with that. It's nothing wrong right. with it. Why make it harder if you don't have to? Why make it harder if you don't have to? <clears throat> See if we can get this camera up and running again. And just Bluetooth? That's pretty cool. Yeah, Bluetooth. It's way it actually connected does this uh, local Wi Fi to it. Oh, really? Just between it and the camera. Oh. Should give me a preview. How old is that uh, there we go. cam? And we'll try recording again. Okay. All right. Well, we might have both cameras back. For now. <laughs> hey, maybe. <laughs> been one of those camera days. I've been in here since 3 o'clock fighting with cameras. It's now noon. Um, when's the last time you did a uh, firmware update on that thing? Um, they're all up to date, brother. Okay. I may be old, but I'm learning. <laughs> we got you learned. Yeah, now we just right, get that. I've been learning stuff. My get that life. Ethernet cable ran around here and get well, you all set up. Well, it's just fine in. taped up on the <laughs> floor. I mean, a little <laughs> redneck ingenuity. That's the other thing. Derek <laughs> is helping me help you guys. Oh, uh, man that's, down. That's why we can't have nice things. That's why you can't have nice things. Derek's helping me with the whole computer upgrade here. And so as much as I'm helping him spend money on fishing, he's helping me spend money on... Electronics upgrades. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Exactly. Well, I know how to spend money. It's just <laughs> well, what, I, what I'm spending it on is now different. Right. <laughs> but so we do have we do have Ethernet out here for the rod building classes, the Zoom classes. Mm -hmm. It's just not 
permanently, Brian. Not, not yet. It's temporarily. Currently, it's currently taped down to the floor, running through the garage, running through the dining room, running into the living room with gaff tape. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah at least it's with gaff tape. It's not duct tape. Exactly. And gaff exactly. tape is like movie maker tape, just so you know. <laughs> so you take wires to the floor with it, which is what we've done with it. Oh, yeah. It's just getting holes drilled and concrete block walls and getting it run around the outside. Mm. Well, the weather's starting to get better for that. Well, it is. It's no longer 100 degrees outside. It was actually very nice this morning. It was nice 68. Oh, yeah. We should have been on a boat, which is where we'll be tomorrow. So you won't see us in here tomorrow. We are fishing for certain tomorrow. All right. I mixed up way too much for this one. I'd rather have more than not enough. Mm -hmm. And you said once you start seeing that swirl, when get the swirl out of there. starts disappearing, mm -hmm. you've got you've got a good homogeneous mixture, mm -hmm. homogeneous. And that gives you about nine to eight minutes to start doing. Yeah, your thing. You get, it's, it says it's a ten minute set. Mm -hmm. um, if you get the parts pretty equal, you get ten to twelve minutes. Set. If you get a little heavy on your hardener, it comes mm -hmm. off quick. Okay. And like I was telling you earlier, if you spread it out, so it's because it's an exothermic reaction mm -hmm. and it's it's putting off heat. And so the more it's clumped up, the hotter it's wanting to it's get. Gonna, yeah, the hot the middle the middle is gonna get hot. Right. And it's wanna set quicker. Yeah, I mean I using the epoxy out on the mm -hmm. both side, um I had a trash can catch on fire. Oh. Because I had a big clump of uh epoxy mixed up and I had it in a clear you know, clear paint yeah. in my hand and it's getting hot and i was working on a boat painting some epoxy corners and stuff and i just dropped it in a trash can it's all right and all of a sudden the smoke starts coming out of the trash can because it, it generates some heat i'm just oh saying my goodness i'm just saying it's a heat generating thing so all right so we're going to start up here in mm -hmm. front of the real seat because we're not going to need much right it just needs to be a little more than wet mm -hmm. It's gonna, the thickness of because the, the gap is much yeah, it's smaller. Yeah, tiny here. gap up here. Versus. And I just want to get it down in the ribs of this x-ray blank, mm -hmm. which is one of the trademarks of the x-ray blank. So it's really, that's why they're so lightweight, mm -hmm. is you can actually see the carbon fiber ribs, the ones that are slick. Mm -hmm. It's because it's got so much epoxy left in the material mm -hmm. that you don't see the ribs and you don't see the carbon fiber material. Mm -hmm. So it makes them very heavy. Makes them durable too. I mean, they're like broomsticks. It's hard to break them. Right. I was like, you still fish with today. <laughs> but kind of heavy. It's like fishing with a brick. You will not catch me with a store bar rod. Except in an emergency. If it's that, uh, if it's I, that or not fishing, I will fish the store bar rod. After, so it was kind of funny because, uh, you know, I was using my rod last weekend and uh, I was like, I was like, I don't, I mean, I like these other rods. I'm like, but I don't really want to use them. <laughs> so I do have, last weekend was uh, Bass and Burgers and BS. It was our seventh one here in Central Florida, where once a quarter we get together as a community from the fishing channel, the uh, AE Fishing, so a YouTube channel where I teach people how to fish and we talk about Kissimmee Chain and what's going on. So last weekend was our seventh bb and b and Derek here was fishing with my partner in the guide business, Captain Lou. But Derek has one of the new FDX blackout rods that he got as a surprise present. Spoiled rotten. He's say. pretty badly spoiled. It's a <laughs> it's a 703, the SJ 703 with uh wind grips. It's a spinning rod, but it's it's pretty mean. I do. I, I, it's pretty I mean. I will. It's the new Blackout series. I've got one casting I built for myself, and I got one in spinning that I built for Derek. Uh, but they're pretty mean. Black smoke, uh, marbling, mm. accents. That's beautiful. Black on black. It's yeah, nice. It's beautiful. Anyway, what he was talking about was fishing with that one, and then picking up one of the nicer store bought spinning rods that I have for clients. Mm -hmm. And it's just not being the same. No, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just not the same. It's 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 not, man. This is I this is it. top it's just, quality. It's just not the same. All right, so that's about where we're gonna meet up.
And use just the leftover to fill in those gaps. To well, we're going to have a little bit of a gap coming inside this ring here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have too much. I'm actually, I'm going to peel it back off. I just wanted to, okay. I wanted to have control of how much was left there. Okay. That's what you're saying. So I'm going to peel some of this excess off before we shove it into that ring and make it harder to get out. Right. What I'm doing is I'm rotating, but I'm also moving the paper towel to a clean spot mm -hmm. as I rotate. That way I don't smear. Mm hmm and it comes off pretty clean. Uh, I'll pitch out one. That's why I use a trash box. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. So I can fling without looking. Either empty the box or get you a new one. <laughs> Choice is yours. Know I, <laughs> I emptied the box this morning at 3 o'clock. I'll surprise you. Oh, you didn't hear anything. No, did I? Well, I'm sleeping. I, was like, I, I told Miss Amy, I was like, yeah, there's been a couple times I stayed up late, you know, I'm <laughs> playing video games. And, uh, <laughs> playing video games. Millennial. <laughs> Millennial. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I take the dogs out before we go to bed. I'm like, yeah, Lee's in there making some kind of racket, dude. <laughs> out there kicking around. Out of the I was going to come over and say, hey, but. Uh, three o'clock in the morning, yeah. Yeah, two, two three o'clock. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> so then right. in ro rotating that, you're filling in those extra gaps I'm that are. I'm spinning, yeah. yeah. And then the hope is that I've got the right amount of epoxy here mm -hmm. that when I push it together, it fills it all up. Mm -hmm. I've got a little bit trapped on the inside right. of that. So that's going to fill in these little grooves here. And we're going to get a little bit of squeeze out. But I don't think we're going to get that much. So now I'm just pushing the real mm -hmm. seat back to the edge of the tape. Yeah, I didn't get much squeeze out at all. I think you've done this time too. Once or twice. <laughs> I think this is. I, for this A2 or the G2, American Tackle G2 handle assembly, mm -hmm. this is over 100 for me. Oh, wow. And I hate them. Really? I hate them to build them. Okay. Just because there's so many parts. Because you got one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then with the hood, you got. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine, and ten. So mm. you get ten pieces, and it takes me, you know, about three hours to assemble all these pieces. Right. Versus the handle that I built on your rod, which mm. is also very nice. It's just not this G two handle. And it took me all of uh, forty minutes to put that together. Oh really? And how many all, how many pieces is that one? It's uh, three. Three. Okay. Butt, butt grip, uh -huh. rear grip, uh -huh. real seat. Easy money. Easy money. But it's super light and incredibly sensitive. Now those ones like that, they have less pieces than what? Yeah, those. Yeah, that the the big boy there. That's mm -hmm. just three pieces. Right. It's the butt grip. Uh -huh. It's the rear grip, uh -huh. and it's the real seat. Gotcha. And then I did extra. Now this one has got four pieces because it's actually got a separate butt cap. Okay. It's got the EVA cap on the back mm -hmm. of that carbon fiber butt grip. Okay. And then you've got rear grip, mm -hmm. so that's four. Okay. It's not, it's really, but I like that because it's easier to bounce around right, right. and then put the butt cap on last. So okay. the, the biggest time on these rods are probably just the, the design. Oh, that, and, the extra, yeah the, yeah, the pretty stuff I do to them. All right, the last thing we gotta do is, remember when we were splining mm -hmm. that rod and it kept jumping to yeah, one spot? Yeah. Absolutely jumping to one right. spot. So this is the spot it was jumping to. Mm -hmm. So we want that down. We want the spine down. So when you hook a fish. Mm -hmm. It doesn't roll. No, it doesn't roll at all. Because it was, I mean, you just I barely had to put it in. It was snap. Yeah. That was one of the easier ones to find a spine on. Well, and it's funny that, you know, you, you showed me that this morning because, and especially being a new fisherman, I don't, I, I don't know what I don't know, but I don't know very many people that know that much in depth. They're like, hey, do you know they have a, a natural way they want to roll? That's 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 absolutely wild. Hey, my endless supply of useless knowledge, my friend. I don't know, know about that. I don't know about useless. Yeah, to most people, it would be considered useless. Well, I have a problem now. I feel like I can't go to like you know Bass Pro or anything. And be like, you see this real nice three hundred dollar rod? That's garbage. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> Sorry. But Sorry, but your three hundred dollar rod and reel is crap. It's garbage. The <laughs> rod that you have. The SJ703, mm -hmm. the way I built it, mm -hmm. um, it is equivalent to, if not better than, the GL the GL2, mm -hmm. um, which is about 400 bucks. Oh my goodness. 
Wow. And I would prefer to fish with yours than a $400 GL2. Right. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff this cavity with some leftover. Yes, because when I'm going to, I will be doing some decorative thread work right here that'll oh. be red and silver. Okay. But then I will do a ramp to go from blank to real seat with just epoxy. Okay. Like this right here. Yep. And if you have any air gaps in here, the thread finish tends to run in there and you might get an air gap. Okay. You, you'll get a bubble. Okay. And bubbles, as we all know, we hate. Right. Because it's just, all it means is extra work. So right. before this completely sets up, we're just getting close. I'm just going to smear this in the hole and then I'm going to wipe all the excess off. So it gives you that nice clean seal. Yeah, it's a seal. It's one more point of contact mm -hmm. with epoxy between the blank and the real seat because mm -hmm. that's what your hand is on. So that's where you're going to feel the vibration of right. the bite, tick, you know, any any vibration is coming through there. The only thing we got to be careful of is we don't spin that real seat trigger. Because it's already set for... It's, it's, yeah, we just got to make sure we check it before, when I get this clean. Essentially, that's true north. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. That's I mean, you have to build on a spine. I mean, to make sure we got all the epoxy out of the... And you're just doing regular, just alcohol cleaning? Yeah, this is just isopropyl alcohol. Mm -hmm. I'll buy it in about half a gallon. Mm -hmm. I move it to these little Amazon condiment squirt bottle mm -hmm. things where you would put ketchup or mustard. Right, right. And you just put the amount you need, wipe just, it off. I just cut a small hole in the top of mm -hmm. it, and it just drips out. Instead of having, you know, a bottle of alcohol, take a lid mm -hmm. off, dip it. It's just, that's just so much easier. Or spend an overpowered, mu or a lot of money on hand wipes that do the exact same thing yeah i mean this i mean i've got see well i guess it's cool yeah that size i buy the big one from kerber right I'm, right right it's cheap and they bring it to me all right so we're going to check that one more time i don't think it moved i don't believe it did mm -hmm. arrow dead center yes sir okay all right so that is Casting handle number one. Derek and I are going to be in here for the next 12 hours finishing up the other five spinning rods and the other three casting rods and the, the, <laughs> we the, <hope> to. <laughs> the seven more that have to, well, there's five more. These two don't really count. They're mine. I told you I was going to put those on the back burner. I'll get to them when I get to them. Actually, I was talking to Nathan yesterday. Yeah. I'm going to do the the guide layout. Okay. And we may do that next, actually, while we set these, let these cure. Mm -hmm. But this is it for the for the rods. We're still on the chaotic day in the rod shop. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, we're going to start doing some static load testing and guide laid out. So don't go away.